Hi there fellow guitarists, Josh Rogers here and welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering Milonga by Jorge Cardoso. It's an absolutely beautiful piece. If you want to hear me playing through the full piece, check out my other video. It's easy to find. It's in a Jorge Cardoso playlist. And uh, you can watch me run through the whole thing. And then you can come back here and reference this one. It's a big favour to me. It would be really cool if you could give this video a thumbs up or a like and leave a comment if you want to and also please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have provided free tabs for this and uh, you're welcome to download those by clicking on the link in the description. And make sure if you do, just uh, give me a heads up, you know, give me a shout out somewhere, share my stuff around on YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, wherever you feel like and uh, that'll do me a great service. Anyway, let's get into this. Uh, surprisingly enough, it's in D minor but this string stays the same tuning, so it's just your normal standard guitar tuning. Now the thing to, to remember when you're playing this piece is that it kind of revolves around a couple of different finger picking patterns and if you can get on top of those you can get on top of the whole piece. So let's start with the right hand. That's the main picking pattern there. So what I'm doing there is thumb, then annular, then middle, then thumb and index together, like this, and then annular, middle, then thumb and index together again, like this, followed finally by annular again, here's the pattern. context it sounds a bit like this. Okay so that's the pattern but just remember that your fingers are going to change strings especially the thumb that's going to be moving around a bit but that's the basic pattern that's going to get you through most of this piece so I do suggest you just make sure you can do that comfortably and then move on to the chords which I'm going to start showing you right now. First chord is D minor, and it starts at the fifth fret on the A string, and you have your other three fingers on, sixth fret on the B string, and seventh fret, seventh fret on the G and D strings. Now you're going to start off with that finger picking pattern like this. So the thumb is on the fifth string, and the other fingers are on the first three strings like this. So I'm going. 5th string, then 1st string, 2nd string, 3 and 4 together, then 1, 2, 3 and 4 together, and then back to that, and I do it twice like this. Alright, now the thing to remember as well with this, in the left hand, you're going to be doing a lot of sequential planting. And what I mean by that is you're going to be using your fingers and putting them on one at a time. Even though you may recognize these chords, there's a temptation to probably do something like this and then try to get them all on at the same time. What that's going to do, it's going to cause you some troubles unless you have excellent finger placement. So what I suggest doing is layering your fingers on one at a time in the order that you play them. So when I, I'll give you an example here. Okay, that's the second chord. Well, it's part of it anyway. What I've done is, instead of trying to do the full chord, which is this, I'll show you a bit later, I'm just focusing on getting the first couple of fingers down that are involved in the first parts of the chord, like this. If I try to get them all on, it's quite difficult to actually do that all at once. So what I mean is if I did this and they all go on at the same time, there's a big chance that I might miss that and get something wrong. So instead of doing that, I think, what are my first couple of notes that I need to get ready? And it's actually this note and the note on the eighth fret on the B string that are the first fingered notes that I need to get ready. I'm a bit lucky there because the second note's actually an open string, so that's pretty cool. And then I put these two fingers on afterwards. Alright, so let's just have a look at that second chord. 6th fret on the E string, 8th fret on the B string, 7th fret on the G string, 
8th fret on the D string. Same finger picking pattern, except the thumb has moved up to the 6th string. So here it is. In the beginning. And the next chord is a beautiful example of pivot fingers. Now pivot fingers are fingers that stay on the same place, or stay at the same place, while other fingers move around. These two fingers here, 4 and 3, they're going to stay there, and I'm just going to switch 2 and 1 around like this. Alright, so these two, don't lift them off. You're just going to make your job so much harder if you do that. So we're going from here. My second finger is going to come up to the 8th fret on the 6th string, and my first finger is going to go down to the 7th fret on the G string. So it's just a swap, like this. Don't make a big effort on it, like don't do this sort of thing. You know, I'm, I'm exaggerating this, but don't do it. Like, don't lift off all your fingers. It takes a little bit of concentration sometimes to just learn how to lift some fingers while others stay on. But trust me, it's well worth it, and it's a technique that you'll use over and over and over again in your guitar playing. Doesn't matter if it's classical, electric, acoustic, or whatever. All the best guitar players use this technique, even if they don't know they're really doing it, just subconsciously they're probably doing it. So there we go, same finger picking pattern. But we only do it once, and then the first finger is going to act like a guide finger. It's staying on the G string, but it's going to the sixth fret, like this. chord. Now I have one pivot finger here which is the fourth finger. So you'll see that from here I'm just going to rush through the fourth finger. It hasn't moved at all. Okay so remember that about that fourth finger. This chord, this chord, this chord, and that chord, this fourth finger hasn't moved at all. Alright, so let me just show you this last chord. So we've come from here, and then we're going to move to this. 8th fret on the A string, 7th fret on the D string, 5th fret on the G string. Same finger picking pattern. Just one time. Then, 4th finger is going to act as a guide finger again. So this time, you're just going to move along from the 8th to the 10th fret like this. And you're going to do that same thing I said before, sequential planting in the left hand. Don't try to get all your fingers on at once from here. Don't try this. Yeah, it's going to be pretty hard. What you want to do is this. And make sure you nail those two notes here. That's the 8th fret on the A string. And as I said before, 10th fret on the B string. Then you're going to put these two fingers at the 10th fret on the G and 10th fret on the D. Same finger picking pattern. So if I just take it from this tricky bit here. Cool, and then it's back to the beginning. This time, we're not going to this chord, we're going to do a little shift like this. It's quite a weird one actually, but we do have one pivot finger, which is that fourth finger again. So we've got this D minor chord, and we're going to switch like this. So essentially what's happened is the third finger is going where the second finger was, to the sixth fret on the B string. Second finger is coming up to the sixth fret on the sixth string, and the first finger goes to the fifth fret on the D string. And you do the same finger picking pattern. down, second finger comes down to the 6th fret on the G string, and your 4th finger comes off, and we do that finger picking pattern once with an open A in the bass, then we're going to move guide finger, okay so I'm 
coming from here. Third finger, guide to the second fret on the B string. Second finger on the second fret of the D string, and let's play together with the open G. Same finger picking pattern. And there, our first finger is going on to the first fret of the first string. There. Same finger picking pattern, and then open like this. finger again here. I take my second finger off a little bit just so that it doesn't squeak. So I'm going slide. That's third fret on the D string, second fret on the G string, third fret on the B string together. 